Hi YouTube, um, this is the second part of a video showing my uh, green tree python uh, eating uh, mouse. So, with it here. so the first video showed her capturing it. She held it for quite a while. And now I think she's begun swallowing it. So hopefully we'll get some good footage so you can see it uh, going down. So yeah, th these are really lovely species of snake and um, while she's eating I suppose I can tell you a bit more about them. Um, so yeah, they come from Australia. Um, there's a very similar snake that you might have seen called the emerald tree boa. Um, and they look identical, like I say, or you know, not identical, but fairly similar in that they're a green snake. They have similar habits as well, so they'll you know, coil around tree branches and live uh, up in trees arborally, you know, waiting for like mice and things to come past and then they'll eat them. Um, the difference, of course, is that, you know, this is a python uh, and pythons lay eggs. Um, and the emerald tree boa, being a boa constrictor, gives birth to live young. So that's one difference. Um, but this whole thing where you have two animals that live in completely different places, because obviously uh, this green tree python is from Australia, the emerald tree boa is from like the Amazon basin. Um, and they've evolved completely separately, but to look, you know, almost the same and to fill the same sort of uh, habitat niche. Um, that's called convergent evolution. Uh, it's just a, a really kind of interesting thing, you know, where they've they've evolved, you know, thousands of miles away from each other, and yet ended up looking really similar and behaving in a really similar way. Let's see if I can get a bit closer here. Typical that uh, she happens to be facing that way, so you can only see the underneath of her jaw at the moment. But so you can see, um, obviously, she's you know dislocated her jaw to be able to fit in uh, a mouse or a rat that's you know bigger. Um, and then you can you can probably see that the two halves of the lower jaw kind of um, separate and it just means that she's able to kind of crawl her jaw over the mouth so she'll she'll kind of move one half of the jaw forward first there she goes and then the other half forward so it, it kind of just like I say creeps over the mouth or rat uh, and makes it easier to swallow These guys have got fairly sort of curved teeth, you know, made for kind of grabbing their prey and, and keeping it held. So if they catch a like a mouse or a bird in the wild, it's just much less likely for that prey item to escape. Um, the emerald tree boa, uh, I used to keep those as well, and uh, and I bred them as well. All the babies are red from those which is really cool but um but yeah these these guys their teeth are big but the emerald tree boa's teeth are massive in comparison and quite often like with the emerald tree boas when i used to keep them they would do this yawning thing um that they usually do after they've eaten these guys do it as well once they've swallowed something they'll do this big kind of yawn and it's just to kind of reset their jaw um, but when an emerald tree boa does it, it's pretty scary because <laughs> it looks pretty hideous with all the teeth showing. So notice obviously she's still holding the mouse with one of her coils just to keep it in place as she starts swallowing it. And once it gets down a certain amount she'll release obviously 
a grip with the coil and just carry on swallowing it. And you know, because you've got to bear in mind, obviously, they haven't got any uh, hands or anything to push it down with. So when the mouse or rat gets a certain distance down into the the snake, it kind of uh, goes down. It looks like it's going down by itself by the sort of internal body movements of the snake, kind of squeezing and pushing it down inside her. Um, another thing I was going to mention is. Um, their tongues. Obviously you might be used to kind of seeing a snake kind of flicking its tongue out when it's looking for food and things but they also have this really cool mechanism where their tongue is like a sort of a tube and the actual fork tongue bit that you normally see is held inside this tube um, which it might be their larynx or something I'm not sure but, um, but what happens is their tongue comes out of this tube and flicks and then goes back in obviously when they're trying to swallow something so yeah it's a really useful way of kind of shutting off their airways while they swallow an item Hopefully she'll finish this in the next couple of minutes and then that'd be quite nice to see the whole kind of tail going in. So yeah, I think I mentioned in my last video that the, the cage setup here is very basic. She just has like a couple of perches, um, a few kind of fake plastic plants. This is all just to make it easier to maintain, really, because green tree pythons, you know, they're not a particularly cheap snake to buy, you know, they're, they're one of the more expensive species, so you want to kind of maintain them as cleanly as possible. Um, so yeah, everything in this cage can be taken out and just sort of hosed down uh, in the bath with a sort of shower. So she just has astroturf at the bottom rather than any kind of substrate. That again makes it easier to clean. Uh, and then she just has a couple of water dishes I just top up all the time and then I just spray her twice a day. So when she finishes this, which she almost has, I'll give her a quick spray. So you can see her jaw that was dislocated, she's probably looking to kind of, once that tail's gone in, she'll be looking to reset her jaw. So you might see a bit of, you know, sort of wiggling of the jaw, just trying to set it back into place. You can see her um, heat pits quite clearly. I have to be a bit careful that she doesn't decide that I'm the next meal because <laughs> obviously my hand holding this camera is giving off a bit of a bit of heat yeah I think she I think she's reset her jaw now because her tongue's come back out again normally the tongue doesn't start coming back out like that until they've reset properly okay so I'll just show you like got one of these spray bottles. These are really useful by the way. I um, It took me a, quite a few years before I thought to buy one of these, which is silly because I think they're only about £20 or something and when you've got as many cages as, as I have it saves having to use one of those little water sprays. So I did a few droplets on her as well and then she can have a little drink of those water droplets straight after she's eaten and it just keeps the cage humidity up as well. Um, I'll just quickly show you this down here as well because I've got a pair of blood pythons at the moment. That's the female's head there. That's the male and they're actually mating at the moment so their tails are joined together. I've got another video that I took of them mating where he's sort of stroking her with his um, spurs on his tail. So check that out and if you like these kinds of videos 
um, hit subscribe and any animal videos that I post up in the future um, you'll be able to see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.